Hello readers, perusers, and bibliophiles of all kinds. I'm Cheddar Allen Poe. And I'm Stone Cold Jane Austen. And welcome to August's episode of Palm Lines. This month we will be looking at the goings-on of the Palm Harbor Library, including all the events and all the fun things that we have to offer, as well as taking a closer look at Persuasion by Jane Austen. Speaking of Persuasion, we're a good match for this library, right? Of course, I mean, it's the best. That's why they keep us in the, in the basement. We, we can't leave. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, on to Palm Harbor. After a two year hiatus, Puzzle Party is back. Register yourself or a group for a fun day of prizes, snacks, and putting it all together. While this is a competition, you can also ensure it will be a day of fun. Register online to save your piece of the puzzle party. You can join a group or go it alone. Coming back for its second installment this summer, join us for this month's showing to find out what it would be like to be young and marooned on an island again. Last month's showing was so much fun and full of laughs, so let's make another showing even better. Register online, and please note that this event is 18 plus. Networking, business growth, and improving individual skills are just some of the benefits of Palm Harbor Business Center's events. Register now for our latest SCORE presentation on Thursday, August 11th at 6 p.m. We are also back with our monthly one-on-one -on -one small business consulting with SBDC. This consulting event will be held Wednesday, August 10th with sessions from 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. Head to our events calendar page to register your time slot and fill out the necessary paperwork. So do you like writing? I dabble. It's fun. Well, then you should join us on August 13th and the 26th for our Writers Group at the Palm Harbor Library, where it's a semi-structured event for writers to encourage other writers to write better, more thoughtfully. And a lot of the secrets to neuro-writing. Find out. Find out. Also happening on the 13th, Saturday morning cartoons. We got the blankets, so get ready to get comfy. We'll be watching What's New Scooby-Doo. And remember, this event is adults only. Yeah, it's our turn. A little aggressive. It's, it's for us. 18 plus. Also, don't forget to join us the 30th for Craft Palooza, a wild extravagant crafting experience. Bring your creativity. There are all sorts of leftovers to create with. Just like Frankenstein. The first craft was only the beginning. Be sure to sign up for the Palm Harbor Library newsletter right on the homepage. And make sure to follow us on F Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Thank you.
Miss Jacqueline. If I look like I went swimming, it's because we just had our clothes down over at Palm Field. I hope you guys were able to make it. It was a lot of fun. If not, don't worry, we do it every year with the fire department. Um, so what's coming up next that's super exciting is our summer carnival. Um, if you earn free tickets for doing the reading clubs, you'll have your tickets there on the day of the carnival. If not, that's okay. You can also um, purchase tickets. All the money goes back to the children's room. And for doing our carnival again next year, there's going to be face painting. There's going to be all sorts of games, cotton candy, possibly popcorn. So it's going to be a lot of fun things happening and that's going to be inside in our community room so it'll be nice and cool in the AC which Ms. Jackson is looking forward to. Uh, we are going to be having a short intermission because that is the end of our summer here at the library. We'll be having like a two week break to let us recoup for fall and plan all of our fall story times and then those will start back up again at the end of August um, and then we'll have them back weekly again like Mother Goose, Baby Bookworms and uh, a toddler story time so definitely keep a look out for that we don't have our calendar out just yet but when it is everybody will be able to get them um, but if you do still want to keep reading and get get things for it definitely still continue doing to, uh, the reading with the rays because their last game isn't until the end of September so you can keep um, doing that program if you want to but our summer reading clubs have come to an end it's been a great summer guys thanks for coming to all of our programs and having so much fun with us in the ocean of possibilities this summer and uh, we look forward to all the stuff fun stuff we're going to do in the fall our august service highlights is our vinyl collection have you checked out our vinyl record collection yet it's located to the right of the library entrance vinyl records can be checked out for 14 days with a limit of 25 records checked out at a time we also have turntables that can be checked out for 28 days if you're interested in checking out a turntable please inquire at the circulation desk now a magic trick First developed by the magicians of ancient Sumeria, passed down throughout the ages to civilizations that all mysteriously vanished, disappeared, or were boosted from power. The last known practitioner passed in the Himalayas, but not before writing down all the secrets in the cipher that took me 20 years to decode. I now show this to you in confidence that you will not try to imitate or figure out how this trick works, but only to sit back and be amazed. I show you now a sealed pack of playing cards. I will now break the seal to begin. Did you get those from Walmart for like Target? Target. 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 Um, the seal is broken there. Right. Yes, I, I am a very good magician. I. Oh gosh. Now, now God's real. Oh no. <laughs> there, wait, I was no. about to say, could you hand it down? There, you open it. Wow, why is it? I found his cipher deep within the flea market. I purchased it for only a dollar, as the person did not know. There we go. What he had. What I is did. It? Thank you. That, that's your... Alright, alright. What's more? What's more? The seal. Yeah, there's no way I could have altered it after that, right? Okay, okay. <gasps> Drum roll. I'm not drawing. Hmm? I said I'm not drawing. <laughs> you know, I was going to make that the drum roll. I'm not. <laughs> Let's see, we'll find the uh, bicycle card. Bicycle card. The Joker. Joker. Where do you say this, uh, this cipher came from? The cipher? Oh, yeah. I had to crack it myself. Ah, and this is from T Sumeria. Originally, yes. And then it got all the way to the Himalayas. Yes, because it was passed down through different civilizations. Were, were you listening? No, 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 I'm good. I'm sorry. I was. <clears throat> my apologies. Master magician. Fifty-two pickup. some controversy from last episode. Legally, we have to inform you about Bob the Fast Talking Goat. We are no longer going to be running his real estate ads. Uh, there was some trouble with uh, some agencies got involved with uh, three and four letters. 
Apparently you cannot have an entire house's worth of wiring and one outlet. That is what's known colloquially, colloquially as a fire hazard. And also all domiciles that you provide for rent must be heated. Gotta have, you can have well water. Um, it has to be your well water. It can't actually be grandfathered in from the 1800s. Not without some changes and it cannot have the original mold. <laughs> Yes, um, the fact that they discovered two new species is a, a kind of nice for science, kind of horrifying for the medical community. The what? Sorry. But we do have some good news. We are going to replace them with. Uh, we have a Robert the Solaritus cetacean. It's a cetacean, isn't that a. No, whales, dolphins, right. Right. Like. like a dolphin? This segment is brought to you by Cheddar's Cheesy Minis, painting miniatures as a passion since 2019. Commissions now open. DM at Ched Cheese Minis on Instagram for details. So did you know that the reason there's so few mummies to study nowadays is because in Victorian England people would grind them up and put them as food additives and paint pigments? And tea. They also put them in tea. Yeah, and they put them in their tea. One second. I just wanted to get through one segment. This weird fact brought to you by Gaither Blade and Bling. We've got everything. Browse a varied and eclectic selection of outdoor gear at gbladebling.biz. Visit our socials and tell them Palm White sent you with code PALM. That's P-A-L-M. For 10% off anything in stock. Or so over $100 shipped free. International customer, contact us to help you. Six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight. Just missing the three of clubs. I thought you said it was fifty-two pickup. Yeah, but we're going breeze to Mary. I gotta get off the show, man. Our genealogy section is packed to the brim with history, boasting over one billion entries. With some at the library. However, if you go to our website, palmharborlibrary.org that's palmharborlibrary.org, you'll find a further comprehensive list of what you might be looking for. And today, power lines. So what do you got for me today, Chad? I'm gonna make you rage, because mm. we're doing the Dead Sea Scroll, and here's my entry. He, shimmer de bear, shake the safe fair pizza, pacifria, shalates de coal, lee he yod him a hagadol, owl coal heretz. Say that again? He, shimmer de bear, shake the safe fair pizza, pacifria, shalates de coal, lee he yod him a hagadol, owl coal heretz. I don't know what it means, I just know what it says. We are not... <clears throat> no! Almost got you. From author Victor V. Virbicus III, a high fantasy adventure quest series, The Epics of Dijradel. Immerse yourself in a tormented king and follow Dijon, king of Dijradel. You meet him halfway through his personal journey, burdened with knowing his own destiny, and driven by a desire to be a successful king, he must face his fears and choose his kingdom's longevity, or his life. You may foresee the ending of some tales, but destiny still leaves room for surprise. Get your copy, paperback, hardcover, or Amazon Kindle. LIES! Or you would have told us Phoebe was the beast. Tonight you will prove this power to me. Now go get your family and the others. Tell them we will have dinner together tonight. LIES! Or you would have told us Phoebe was the beast? Tonight, you will prove this power to me. Now go get your family and the others. Tell them we will have dinner together tonight. That is not a country. Enough of that emotional crap! Speed is the name, enunciation is the game! From young author Isaac Padgett comes a gripping story of Jack, a young thief whose only goal is to prove his love. Forces that work beyond his sight have other plans though, and he is thrust into a race against demons to get his hand on a weapon that can, no, will, change history forever. 
who can he trust when those closest to him have a knack for betrayal? Jack must push through and beat his enemies, all while trying to protect those he loves. Get your copy now on Amazon Kindle. I knew which merchant I wanted to see, but he wasn't always at a stall. He tended to have hushed meetings with the shadiest kind of people, which is why I was interested in seeing if he would fence for my crew. Some of the more expensive items were getting more and more difficult to move. Slipping through the crowd was easy if you knew how to read it. My eyes automatically scanned my surroundings to see if there was trouble brewing. A day like today was great for thieving, but also more dangerous. More people meant you were more likely to be spotted. I knew which merchant I wanted to see, but he wasn't always in his stall. He tended to have hushed meetings with the shadiest kind of people, which is why I was interested in seeing if he would fence for my crew. Some of the more expensive items were getting more and more difficult to move. Slipping through the crowd was easy if you know how to read it, and my eyes automatically scanned my surroundings to see if there was trouble brewing. I think day like today was great for thieving, but also more dangerous. More people meant that you were more likely to be spotted. Quit back here. This segment is brought to you by the Palm Harbor Library. Please support your local libraries and come down, come on down to this one if you're in the area. He brought cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the Last Call, where today we'll be talking about Persuasion by Jane Austen. Mm. Joy, we are joined today by... Jean Coppola, Library Director, Palm Harbor Library. Yay. <laughs> so, uh, I understand this was actually at both the book clubs uh, this month. Yeah, and I'll tell you something. Uh, there's a real big difference with uh, when you have book clubs and you have beer and you don't have beer. <laughs> now, I had the regular book club over here. We had about four or five members. It was a very, and it was here at the library. It was a very somber, sober discussion. Yeah, it was good. I really enjoyed it. And then we went across the street to Stilt House, <laughs> and we had our Elves and Tales. I was the greatest discussion I've had about any book, and I can't remember how long. It took two, two hours, a uh, third round of beers. It was great, man. It really, really was great. Never, I never realized so many people love Jane Austen, especially after having three beers. It was great. Well, it's a good thing that there's a good amount of people that love her, because uh, you're a little stone cold about Jane Austen. <laughs> I am... <laughs> Rough, huh? uh, the prediction said, yeah, you can get through it in like two, three hours. It took me seven hours to read that, to read a 200 page book. I'm not going to mention how long it took me. It's rough. I, I mean, it's rough. It's a. Uh, but you guys understand, um, what she's really writing about, yeah, today, nowadays, if, if you talk, you can really just go through the whole thing, tell you right up front how we uh, yeah. Then they had to go around and say it in three different ways to say the same thing that you can say today. But you got to say to yourself, well, why is she still so popular today? And was written, especially during the time when it was written, when nobody understood the language the way it is you know, written back then. Her books, though, are more than just about romance. When they make it into movies now, they make it more into like a rom-com type of thing. It's like the least of what her books are about. Her books are really about two things, social status, structure, and the role of women at that time, and how they were second-class citizens. There was definitely a lot of the social structure in this book, which was... Uh, I, I actually, uh, to sort of process what I read, I watched the 1971 version. Oh, who was um, in that one? Do you remember? <laughs> My wife is the one who's good at actors. I <laughs> um, but uh, that one, they, they definitely, it felt a lot more about the social structure. It yeah. felt a lot more... Uh, that the women were sort of in their place, they were in their role. Uh, it, it could definitely be something to, to learn about the era, especially nowadays when uh, we don't have as many considerations. Uh, but it was very interesting to see, especially since the uh, Mr. Elliot was so concerned about just rights. <laughs> no tenant shall have more than his just rights. His just rights? <laughs> yeah, renter's rights. Weird. Uh, man, that's not topical then, uh, right now. <laughs> Mr. I believe it was uh, was it Mr. Musgrove who oh, yeah. after she had her, the one had her fall and then he's he took the side of the sister as opposed to right. he, he didn't really stick up for Anne very much. Right, right. Um, 
You know, it's kind of interesting when we when we do our ales and tales. And that's the uh, the book club that we have at Stillhouse Brewery. It's kind of interesting because in the first hour we were, we were all pretty polite about talking about the sisters Elizabeth and uh, Mary and so forth. And during the second hour, after we had our second and third uh, a beer, I mean, someone just came out and said, you know, that Elizabeth was a real bitch. She really, really was. And Mary's psychotic and, and, and a narcissist. I, I, I tell you, it really opened it up for what it was like, those characters. Perhaps a letter, Father. <laughs> I think we should send it as soon as possible, don't you? Yes, yes, it won't be an easy letter to write. I shall have to explain and regret it won't be easy. <laughs> I know. Uh, I... Yeah, we should, we should get into these characters. Cause... Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah, and here's, I will preface this by saying, I did not enjoy the book. However, I understand its importance historically. I think it should be one of those things, however, where you look at it, you take the lessons from it, and then you put it back where it came from. Good lesson. Good lesson. You know, and there's something, I, for me, I think the worst part about a book is, if, especially for the characters, if you feel indifferent. If you love a book or if you hate a book, that's fantastic because it stirs some emotion in you. But if you couldn't care less, that's a terrible book. I really, and I really hated the father. But Sir Walter, I think that was the guy's name. Sir, yes, yeah, Sir Walter. Oh I'm yeah. Confused with Mr. Walter. <laughs> the other Mr. Walter. Names got me in this book, by the way, because it's like, all right, we went from Sir to Mr. to a different Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the first paragraph. You know, it was almost like reading a Russian novel. I mean, there were so many characters who belonged oh, yeah. to who and whatever. And how important. Are the people that you think are going to be important are right. like in the beginning and right. never more. Right, never right, to, to quote right. Edgar Allan Raven. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> you got it. You know, one thing I want to ask oh, is... Oh, that's uh, right, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot our own pun. The only stupid joke. <laughs> you know, but then I want to... You know, what really got me about this book is that there was only a couple things that... A woman could do during that time, okay? Besides getting married and doing her own thing. Either you went for a lot of walks or you went to parties every night. Oh, they walked every night. Right, didn't they? Like it was all, like you said, all walks and parties. <laughs> That's all it was. That's every social gathering was walks and parties. <laughs> so the one jumps and she got hurt. And therefore, the one who jumped, she disrupted the flow, and that is, she is. That's just, not a continuity break. I don't, it's not. It's just, that's just opinion, how people are. This opinion was not denied by the author. That's right. It also wasn't confirmed. <laughs> I just thought she was an idiot. I mean. Why would you want to jump off something here's like. Here's the thing. She might be. But she was probably the best character because of it. She was the one that was just. Enjoying had, life. Yeah. That's she enjoyed right. up until. <laughs> Spoilers. Yes. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm using that scene. I'm going to use that scene liberally. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you guys think about that? I, mean, I know, I know what you were saying. What do you, what do you think about the book, man? Um, I'll straight out say I'm not a fan of Jane Austen. Okay. Uh, I did have to read Pride and Prejudice, and I, I say that uh, I chose my words carefully. There. I had to read Pride and Prejudice in high school. Uh, did not particularly care for it. Um, I do like the era. I will say that. And it is also very interesting to see a lot of the discourse and how different it is looking at it from a social aid lens versus, mm -hmm. say, a worldly lens. For example, there's a part where they're talking about mm -hmm. English officers and naval officers being the most upright of gentlemen. <laughs> well, except yeah. for the father, who, thinks, yes. who has two strong opinions on Navy men, which are they are extremely ugly. Yes. yes. And that no one of lower class should be able to work their way up to higher standing. Oh, I love that quote. Yeah, I love that quote. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Continue. I just had to get that in before, as you mentioned it. But just, just the difference in how they saw things and how it was perceived versus how we perceive things today. Uh, and again, I kind of, been watching the 1971 made me enjoy it a bit more, especially with the, the actors for uh, Mr. Elliot was very much over the top. And the Admiral were, were pretty much over the top. Oh, oh, what, what only one minor, minor thing <laughs> We've made very few changes, you know, Miss Elliot, very, very, very few. I remember that scene in the book. Yeah, they were talking about it. It's like, oh, yeah, the only thing we change is that I think your father will love it. It's like, your father doesn't love anything. <laughs> we, uh, we sent away his walking glasses, though. I've done very little myself, except for sending away some of the large looking glasses from what was your father's dressing room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the other thing too about the book, and I think it's really the thing that a lot of people go with nowadays, uh, it's a, because, you know, what the hell's going yeah. on here? You gotta move around. Yeah, you gotta move around, yes. Ah, I dropped this. <laughs>
Now, the one thing I will say about it, what makes a classic? You know, it isn't just because it was written about two or three hundred years ago, but really what makes a classic is, it, whatever the theme is in that book, it's still relevant today. Yes. So, one of the main themes in that book is a second chance at love. Now, how many times have we screwed up the first time around, either ourselves or somebody told us something that was bad advice, and we listened to it and screwed up? And here she is, a ripe old spinster at the age of 27 years old. You say, oh my God, I screwed up when I was 19, and here's my chance to get back. How many times a lot of us have been through that? So I think that in that regard, the book is still relevant. I don't, I don't know. I mean, no, I, mean I, I agree. That's what I mean. It's like you can look at this and take some of the lessons from it and go, yeah. yes, this isn't, and it's also, you know, you don't like to, you shouldn't throw away history. Even do you think of what's <laughs> Oh, you got you sitting in one of our better yeah, chairs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This one's not much better. There we go. All right. <laughs> um, perspective. Perspective. Woo. Um, <laughs> that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, like I said, it's, you know, you don't want to throw history away. And even if it changes, this is a good thing to look back on. It's like, yeah, people were just sort of like this. A lot of people were just kind of terrible, where they had these views that are super outdated, which is why, like I said earlier, when I, when my views on it are, this is important, and you should remember it, but it's not 100% applicable, thank you, Jack. Word of the day, applicable. <laughs> um, but ultimately, you can look at it and go, I hate all of these characters. I hate this roundabout way of writing, though I know, understand it's necessary. If they rewrote this book today, it would be like 150 pages shorter. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so like I said, my personal thing is I didn't enjoy it, but I understand its relevance and its importance, and I do think it does have important notes in it. And Though there's other parts of it that I, I'm kind of confused about, it's just like, Oh, well, she bumped her head and she's like a completely different person. But anyway, hello, man. It's, you know, or the, the characters they introduce that are sort of like, ooh, is he going to be the interest? And he's there for a, a good chapter. Or yeah, so. right, right. And then they just mention him later. It's like, nah, he just didn't want to show up. He's just not coming back into this book at all. That really confused me when the, the cousin at first was like, oh, I was at the same inn. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the Sir. The Sir. Sir. Sir, mm -hmm. Sir Charles. <laughs> No, Mr. Sorry, that was Mr. Charles. So, Sir Charles is the father. Mr. Charles is the cousin. By the way, there's some potential cousin love in this. And that's, well, you see, in the Victorian era, when you're trying to maintain three generations, it's not okay. It. It's not okay. The Palm Harbor Library does not condone marrying your cousin for any means. No, we do not. <laughs> no, we do not. Well, at least I give you a credit for reading the book. I mean, not many people do that, so I, I give you a lot of credit for that. Uh, I mean, I, I was, I did look into it. They said, like, you know, this is the last one that she wrote before she died. It was published after she died. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's also uh, combined with another one of her books that was written around the same time. And in fact, they were actually sold together in the, some of the original printings. Was it Sandition? Was it Sandition? Uh, we're going to look this up in one moment. And we're going to get back <laughs> in once we figure out the answer. Um, I had it memorized. And break for a minute. <laughs> I think it was Sandition. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, then maybe. Uh... Oh yeah. But you North know. Northanger Abbey. Ah, okay. Yeah, it was published with uh, Northanger. North Northanger <laughs> North Abbey. Northanger Abbey. Right. Totally steal the thunder. But you know, one of the things I, I, I do this every time, every year in my book club, I do at least one classic, and, and I'll tell you the reason why is because. Uh, there's so many other great books that are coming out nowadays, and what happens is that the classics keep getting pushed back, and we tend to forget that, but there's a reason why they're classics. Uh, so every year I like to pull one out. Like last year we did Frankenstein, the original Frankenstein, which was pretty good. Uh, and next year I decided to do uh, Jane Eyre. Uh, by Bronte, because there's some serious issues going on with this guy Rochester, who has his mad wife up in the attic, and who's this Jane here hanging out in the moors by herself? There's a lot going on there, man. And then the year before, we did uh, Weathering Heights, so every year I like to bring out a new book, 
And actually, for the uh, for October, we're actually going to be doing uh, for Halloween uh, for the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, that's so we'll be doing that. It's for October, Halloween, we're going to be doing that one. So I know a lot of people can do the the, the contemporary books, but it's, as a librarian, I like to do. Uh, a call for, for justice and bringing back some of the classics. So, you know, for what it's worth, you know, that's what I do. To cover myself from earlier, I do understand that Jane Austen was absolutely pivotal in um, authoring uh, for who she was at the time and becoming a published author. I completely respect that. I'm just I'm not so in love with her work. Hey, and that's great. The fact that you can read it and say why is better than say, pfft, Austen, who cares about her? Well, we made the, you guys made the attempt. Which I give you a lot of kudos for. A lot Which, of kudos. I, mean, I do recommend, if you're going to give it a try, give it a try. Mm -hmm. um, you can check it out here at the Palm Library. Or possibly Thank you, man, for saying that. I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> Any library. You can probably check it out physically, or if you can't, I, I, watched, I read it on my phone on an app called uh, Ruby. If you can get them. Um, or if you prefer and you don't have the time, Netflix just came out with a new version of it. Just came out about two or three weeks ago. I did see it. Yes, it has. Let's put it this way. Uh, this took place right in 1816 in Bath, England. That was the okay. funniest part of the book: is having to read, going to Bath. Uh, well, going to Bath. The <laughs> film. Oh, had... Bath with your father and your sister. <laughs> right, I'm right. Miss Elliot, when will you be joining your father and sister in Bath? <laughs> it's, like, it's like this is a town, right? I'm not just being weird. <laughs> it's like okay, yes. But I'm glad you guys read it. I give you a lot of credit, and uh, that's good. <laughs> Uh, you may actually like more uh, Dickens. Uh, he's written some pretty good stuff. I have to. I, I, I will say, I'm, I'm the youngest, youngest here. I grew up on a lot of young, young adult or um, more contemporary fantasy novels, which I'm fine with. You can't, don't judge me. But, um, I, know, I read fantasy all the time. And I should definitely pick up more classical books, and I probably will now that I've, the, the, the app I've been using is, I've been reading so much. And I have your card with the Palm Harbor Library. There you go. Actually, Throw it in, Matt. <laughs> I'm not a local, but if you are a local, signing up for your library card is as easy as one, two, commercial. Or, I mean, we're, you're here, we have you as long as you want to be here. So. Oh, yeah, okay. So. Um, we talked about... And here I had all these bullet points and I forgot them too. It's like <laughs> yeah, right. setting, overall characters, so, setting... The overall of the story is that uh, it focuses on Mr. M sorry, Sir Charles and his three daughters. Sir Charles' wife has recently passed away. And he's terrible with finances. He has got them into a very deep hole of debt. Right. He has a couple friends, shockingly, that, um, <laughs> that are trying to get him out of it. They suggest renting out his house. There's a lot of kerfuffle about not wanting to right. do it. Right, Kellynch Hall. Kellynch Hall. What? Lee Kellynch? The only thing I have left to my name? <laughs> yeah, literally. But this is unendurable. What, every comfort of life knocked off? Journeys, London. Servants, horses, table, contractions, and restrictions everywhere. Father, it's no use. What to live without the decencies of a private gentleman? Right, sooner quit Kellynch Hall at once. Um, and that part doesn't play a huge part. We meet those characters and we come back to them, but that really has nothing to do with the rest of the story besides moving the characters around. I mean, kind of like the fall. It's, it's a way to move them. It's a reason to move right. them. That's what it feels like. They're always walking around. Right, that's right. right. It's, like it's, it's part of the action, but it's not centered around. It. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, having a brain fart. Who's the family they come across? I'm like, oh, I didn't realize this was right here. Let's go. Let's go calling. The Musgroves. Yes, yes. Musgroves. the Musgroves. Which Mary, the mm -hmm. youngest daughter, is married to one of their sons. Charles Musgrove. Charles. Charles. Charles right. See how this gets Charles. confusing. <laughs> Sir Charles, Mr. Charles, Charles Musgrove. <laughs> and it's not quite a good match. No, uh, they even later in the book say they would have definitely preferred if Anne, the child we follow mostly, married married uh, Charles Musgrove. Right. Mary sort of does things for attention a lot. <laughs> sort of. Um, and shockingly, she's like the second most likable person in this book. <laughs> That's followed true. Followed by Anne. Or no, Anne's first, right. then Mary, then Elizabeth, the oldest daughter, who's not catching any flack for not marrying someone... Who's, who's constantly, she's she's the dad's favorite. So she's sure. taking over the affairs. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Letting know what to do in certain situations. Um, and overall, the book is just, 
the reason I didn't like it too much is it's just a lot of rich people kind of <laughs> talking about their life and complaining about it here, doing their, like we talked about before, a lot of walking, a lot of parties. It's good. It's such a roundabout way to get through it. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just going through, uh, not Mary, Anne's life of about her middle middle child, love lost, love regained, which is a theme in a lot of Jane Austen books. So if you've read one Jane Austen romance, you've probably read them all. However, Persuasion was considered to be her most mature. Okay. Correct. Yeah. That is correct. Which, if that is true, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair, yeah. I, I, I've only read the one, so I will have to read more, which... Well, maybe, uh, maybe you should read... Pride and Prejudice and Vampires. That's, yeah, I forgot about that. That's a good one. Come on, man. Is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. The guinea pigs. No guinea pigs. No, thank you. I'd rather the vampires. And, but we here at the Palm Harbor Library would like to just say, we encourage you to pick it up for yourself and form your own opinion. Correct. And if you liked it, didn't like it, let us know in the comments. Please light us on fire if you want, or give us good praise, please. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I said um too many times now, but I think that covers a good amount of things. Uh, I would give the book out of a rate out of a ten rating. Go ahead. I'd give it a five for what it's trying to tell you. Um, the clear manner when it does get to that point. Uh, those are only two, I know, but imagine there's three more for arbitrary reasons, and that's my five out of ten. I'm going to go with a 5.9 out of 10. Uh, five, because it is a classic and uh, it does have a place in literary history. I'm going to go with the point nine just because the 1971 version actually sort of redeemed it for me. <laughs> move, and it helped me to process, because sometimes when you're, when you're reading, um, you have your brain movie going on, of things going on. For me, it does not work as well with this style of writing. So I really like uh, the plays and the, the stage uh, screenplays. Mm -hmm. Tell me with that. Mm -hmm. I would give it a 7.5. I've read better. I think it has its place, like what you guys were saying. Um, but yeah, I'll stick with a 7.5. Something like history that. History is important to be remembered, but <laughs> history is important, but no, it's, uh, history, history is important, but some things age not well, I think. It's, I don't know. Same thing. Yeah. Well, I'll, we can work on it. It's, it's still, I'm not good at saying it. Sounds good. Thank you for letting us Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank you. I really appreciate it. We're about to get shoved back in the basement. Yeah. Hope you like the darkness down there. Uh, All right, guys. Can we fix the pipe leak? We'll do what we can. Once more, I am Cheddar Allen Poe. And I'm Stone Cold Jane Austen. And we thank you for joining us for this month's episode of Palm. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and subscribe. Smash that notification button harder than Louisa smashed her head on the paper. Yikes. Alright.